Don't sleep on a Bork controller. This is going to be a fun one. I will admit, I have slept on a Bork controller for far too long. I really shouldn't have, especially for React devs. Uh, if you're a React dev, you've used a use effect, which means you almost certainly should also be using a Bork controller. If you're a JS dev, this will benefit you. But if you're a React dev, this is almost an essential watch. Trust me, you want to stick this one through to the end. There's so many cool little things I didn't even know when I was originally filming this video that I hope will benefit you as well. Do you know what else I hope will benefit you? Today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is someone I'm actually really excited to talk about because it's a product that makes this channel possible. It's a bit different from what you might expect, but hear me out because Notion has changed my life. I don't just use it as a random note-taking tool. I use it to run my channel because the database product is actually incredible. In here, I have a Kanban board of all the different things that I cover, all the topics I'm planning on filming. Here's all the ones I just finished filming for today's stream. And when I go to the main view, this is my calendar for what videos come out when, all in one place with clear tags of who does what and an insane level of customization for whatever my team needs to see or do. And it's not like, oh, it's just a table with five views. You can build relations between different boards and different things as well. So if we go in here, I can see who sponsored what video. And I can see we currently plan for the abort controller video to be the one that has Notion sponsoring. And I can click there and it will bring me over to the Notion side where I can see in here all of the info that we've logged about working with Notion. It's so convenient. I don't know how I would do my job without it. If you haven't looked at Notion's database product, you have not actually used Notion yet. The only tool that I rely on more than Notion is OBS. Everything else I could replace. These guys have made my life so much easier. I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't. Thank you, Notion, for sponsoring today's video. Check them out today at soydev.link slash Notion. Today, I'd like to talk about one of the standard JS APIs that you're likely sleeping on. It's called Abort Controller. Abort Controller is a global class in JS that you can use to abort, well, anything. Even after the election, are we sure about that? That might be illegal in some states. You use it very simply. Cost controller equals new abort controller, controller.signal, controller.abort. Once you create a controller instance, you get two things. The signal property, which is an instance of abort signal. This is a pluggable part that you can provide to any API to react to an abort event and implement it accordingly. For example, providing it to a fetch request will abort the request. All of chat catching my joke there. <laughs> Bruh, <laughs> took a second. Time out this guy. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I, it was too good. I, I had to do one anyways. The other thing you get from the controller instance is the abort method, which will trigger the abort event on the signal. It updates the signal to be marked as aborted. So far, so good. But where's the actual abort logic? That's the beauty. It's defined by the consumer. The abort handling comes down to listening to the abort event and implementing the abort in whichever way is suitable for the logic in question. So to be clear, you can build your own abort controller logic, but what we care about isn't when you build it yourself. What we care about is how useful it is in already existing JS APIs and then maybe you can go build it for yourself too. So how do we actually use it with those? The most common use case and the one I should probably use it much more often for are event listeners. You can provide an abort signal when adding an event listener for it to be automatically removed once the abort happens. How many times have you all written this code? Let me show what I'm referring to here quick. I'm sure we've all had to write code pretty much exactly like this before. I know I have far too many times. You might not have noticed something here though. I actually intentionally left a typo a typo that I've made far too many times. Resize, hash change, storage. Resize, hash change, resize. Oh, I removed the wrong event listener here. <laughs> Very easy to make this type of mistake because when you define things twice, you now have double the surface area to make a mistake in. But when you do this with an abort controller, as long as you pass the signal to all of these, you don't have to redefine all of the event listeners to remove them here. You can just do it here. And what's even cooler is you don't have to keep track of these function bindings. Like if I didn't write resize here as an existing function, instead I inlined one, how do I unlisten to that? Because this function doesn't exist. I have to define it just in order to be able to unlisten. So I'd have to do something like, I don't know, const handle resize equals this, and then pass the handle resize function. But now what if I actually want to use something from this? What if I want something from the event? Like I want E for like the resize event and to do something with it. Well, now I have to not only put it here, but I have to define the type correctly. And defining the right types for event handlers is probably my least favorite thing in TypeScript other than enums. It is hell. It is miserable. 
So if you want to be able to remove an event listener, you need to have the thing you bound accessible in order to call that. Or you can just use an abort signal. Now you don't have to deal with this anymore. Now you don't have to be careful about how you're defining functions so you can find them in order to unbind them later on. For that reason alone, this is super worth it. Back to the article quick. In the example above, I'm adding a use effect hook in React that introduces a bunch of event listeners with different purpose and logic. Notice how in the cleanup function, I can remove all of the added listeners by calling controller.abort just one time. Neat. And that's not just for event listeners, by the way. Works great for fetch requests as well. To be fair, we handle a lot of these things well in something like React Query. And if you are making fetch calls in your React components, you should probably be using React Query. If you're not, or you're doing fetches in other places, or I don't know, other frameworks, an abort controller can be really, really handy to prevent race conditions when variables change and you're using the onComplete in order to trigger other things. Ronan just had a really good drop, and I forgot about this entirely. Part of React Query is that you actually can use a signal that they have built in. They already have an abort controller signal baked in for you. So if you're writing a custom fetch call here, you can just pass their signal instead, and they'll handle the abort for you. That's so cool. I didn't know they did that. That's, yeah, use this. So here we have an upload file. Oh, obligatory upload thing plug. By the way, if you are doing file uploads in your projects, you should at least check out what we built with upload thing. We put a lot of time into this so you don't have to learn what an abort controller is just to do a file upload correctly. We handle all of this stuff for you, but now you know how to do at least this part yourself, right? Good luck making this resume though. Anyways, file uploads are hard. This helps with a good part of it though, which is nice. Because now, since we've returned with this controller, when we call upload file, we can at any point abort if we need to. So if the user navigates somewhere else or they hit a cancel button, controller.abort is enough to cancel the upload now. Very, very handy actually. Here, the upload file function initiates a post slash upload request which returns the associated response promise, but also a controller reference to abort the request at any point. This is handy if I need to cancel the pending upload, for example, when the user clicks on a cancel button. I will say I would have written this very, very slightly differently. It's not a big deal. I would have done that because I don't want the consumer of this to have to know anything about what a controller is when they could just call this abort function. Small thing, personal preference, but I would not want you to bind this signal externally without really good reason. I wouldn't even want to expose the potential for someone to do that unless they really, really need to, at which point that should be explicitly called out in the code. Tiny, tiny thing. And this is written this way for a reason, so it's simple in the code example, but that's the one change I would make. As I say, this is handy if you need to cancel the pending upload, like if the user clicks a cancel button. And even report requests issued by HTTP in Node support the signal property, which is really nice. A lot of things support this. We also have abort signal dot timeout, which is a static method as a shorthand for creating a signal that dispatches the abort event after a certain timeout duration is passed. No need to create an abort controller if all you want is to cancel a request after it exceeds a timeout. I didn't know about this. That's really handy. This lets you add timeouts to anything that takes a signal. Huge. My lead researcher, Gabriel, just dropped a link. Add timeout to fetch as part of Axiom's JS library. That's really cool. Since they're using fetch methods for sending this data to the Axiom servers, which by the way, Axiom's a logging platform, really cool stuff, great guys over there. Now we can add a timeout for how long this logs allowed to take before we just give up. And that was implemented simply by adding signal bound to abort signal dot timeout. That's super, super handy. I had no idea it was that easy to do this. Beautiful. A plus plus. Also, it's a small thing, but the fact the blog doesn't shift where I am when I open and close my sidebar. Oh, so nice. Artem, you're killing it. More abort signals. This time dot any. Similar to how you can use promise dot race to handle multiple promises on a first come first serve basis. You can utilize the abort signal dot any static method to group multiple abort signals into one. Interesting. So we have these two signals that could abort and we can bind them by grouping them with an array like that. I would have been surprised if there wasn't something like this, but it's cool they call that out. As Artem calls out here, they have two abort signals and the internal one allows them to remove the listener without interfering with the public abort controller, but they also have the public one. So the public one could be used by somebody externally 
The internal one could be used just inside of this library function, whatever the scope of this is. The value here is if you want to keep this internal one for internal things, but also allow for certain things to be aborted with the public controller, you can use both. It's really cool. And instead of having to write like public controller dot signal dot add event listener, and then trigger the internal controller abort yourself, you can just use abort signal dot any. That makes a lot more sense. That's a lot more syntactically clear. I much prefer this. Good shit. You can also cancel streams. And I knew this because I just covered a very fun thing. This code is how pre-rendering works with dynamic IO and PPR in Next.js. And they use an abort controller in order to kill the stream that comes from React's pre-render function after all the synchronous code is executed, but before the asynchronous code executes. I have a whole video about this called The Magic Powering of Next.js. It's not out yet, but it probably will be by the time you're watching this video. Faze, put the thumbnail here if it already is. You know the drill. Link in the description. It's probably out by now. Yeah. Super useful use case if you want to stop a stream because you got to a value you were looking for, or you're killing it because you want to do something else entirely differently. Super handy stuff. But as Arna mentioned before, you can make anything abortable as long as you're in the right state. My favorite part about the abort controller API is that it's extremely versatile, so much so that you can teach your logic to become abortable. Huge. With such a superpower at your fingertips, not only can you ship better experiences yourself, but also enhance how you're using third-party libraries that don't support aborts or cancellations natively. In fact, let's do just that. Apparently, Drizzle doesn't have them in transactions, but we can implement it ourselves. Shout out to Drizzle. Great ORM. Import transaction rollback error from Drizzle. Function make cancelable transaction, db. Return callback options, db.transaction, tx. Return new promise.resolve, reject. Roll back the transaction if the abort event is dispatched. So we add this event listener for if the option signal for our, again, options, we can now pass it a signal with the cancelable transaction. So we have options.signal, and that's an abort signal. Now, if it exists, we add an event listener where we reject the promise and we throw a transaction rollback error. Otherwise, we resolve it properly. That's really simple. Mind you, it's three levels of chained returns here with callbacks, which I never love but it's really easy to write this code and understand what it's doing. And as Artem calls out here, they added the event listener for the abort event on the signal instance. Now that event listener will be called whenever an abort event is emitted. As I said here, options as signal to add event listener, abort, and we then call the reject. Does this need to be async here? I don't think it does because we're just calling the reject from this promise. I don't think that has to be async. Small thing. Will this have saved me work for ping is a question I just got in chat. Um, if you're not familiar, ping.gg is my video call app that I built and got through Y Combinator with that makes it easier to do live collaborations for streamers. If you've watched Primogen's podcast, they're using us. LTT used to use us for a bunch of stuff, still does here and there. Iron Mouse, Elgato, and plenty of others use us for their live collabs. And I had to write a lot of code like this throughout my life. And there's one good way to see how much this would have helped me. Not that big. I thought I had more remove event listener calls than I do. Good to know. Yeah, it would have helped, but it wouldn't have been a big deal. Now that we've implemented this make cancelable transaction, what does consuming it look like? I think I know, but I want to see it. Transaction equals make cancelable transaction. Await transaction, transaction, await TX update set where, TX update set where, and then you pass it a signal, the same way you would anything else. That is super, super simple. Love it. I am calling the make cancelable transaction utility function with the DB instance to create a custom abortable transaction. From this point on, I can use my custom transaction function as I normally would in Drizzle, where I'm performing multiple database operations, but I can also provide it with an abort signal to cancel all of them at once. Huge. That is super convenient. Honestly, Drizzle should probably implement this, but the fact that they haven't, and it's still as easy to do, that's really cool. But where it's even cooler is when you decide to actually handle these errors because every abort event is accompanied with the reason for it. That yields even more customizability as you re can react to different abort reasons differently. The abort reason is an optional argument to the controller.abort method. You can access the abort reason in the reason property of an abort signal instance. So in here, we have controllers.signal.reason, which we can call. Do we not get it as an event here? I would have assumed. Let's try this quick, actually. Cool, so I just created an abort controller. I add an event listener where I just log whatever gets passed to that. And that event, type abort, does it not have reason in here? 
I guess it has target, which has the abort signal, which has reason. But I would have guessed that this event would have had it. Yeah. Today I learned. At least you can get it from current target or target, but still interesting. <laughs> Apparently, abort signal that any only got support added in Firefox in March this year. That's terrifying. Here's an example of using an error from an abort if you want to see what that looks like. Very cool because it still will throw when you call the abort. So now you can catch on these different types of errors. Super handy. Yeah. I didn't realize I thought reason had to be a string. It can be any value. So it can be a string, an error, or even an object. That's actually really cool. Conclusion. If you're creating libraries in JS where aborting or canceling operations makes sense, I highly encourage you to look no further than the abort controller API. It's incredible. And if you're building applications, you can still utilize the abort controller to a great effect when you need to cancel requests, remove event listeners, abort streams, or teach any logic to be abortable. Fantastic blog post. Go give Artem a follow. It's on bluesky.com and also on Twitter, Kenanito. Links to the blog post in the description. You can find all that there. And until next time, peace nerds.